lead acid batteries are most commonly found in cars and vehicles, not electric cars, but a common uh, petrol or gasoline powered cars. The batteries used to start the engine, light the lights, heat the car in some cases. All right then, so there's two electrodes. There's a lead electrode and a lead four oxide electrode. And the electrolyte is sulfuric acid, which I've shown uh, dissociated into protons and the sulfate ion. Now we're going to look at the discharge cycle when chemical energy is turned into electricity. So the sulfate ion goes towards the lead electrode and see that two minus charge there, those two electrons? Well, they are going to come off and go through the wire. There's the half equation for this part of the cell. Lead and sulfate makes lead two sulfate and those two electrons. They pass through the wires, do some work, maybe light a light, and they go to the cathode. Now the reaction at the cathode is, well, something has to happen to those other parts of the electrolyte. Four protons and the sulfate ion go over to that lead four oxide cathode and undergo that equation there. Some facts you do need to know about the lead acid battery. It's, uh, it's heavy, it's made of lead and it's corrosive. There's, there's acid in it too. Uh, it needs to be topped up with water occasionally, otherwise it won't work because you're actually electrolyzing sulfuric acid and you're gonna lose a little hydrogen and oxygen. And you can measure the density of the sulfuric acid, the electrolyte, to see how close your battery is uh, to giving maximum output, to check its quality. All righty, so the IB says you have to be familiar with these equations, which doesn't mean you have to learn them, but you have to manipulate them. So what could they ask you here? Well, I'm thinking maybe they could ask you to work out the two half equations. So let's do that. You have to split this into the oxidation and reduction half equations. Well, just by looking, I can tell that the oxidation state of lead changes. Nothing else does. That's sulfate, that's sulfate. Hydrogen's plus one there, plus one there. Oxygen's minus two on both sides. The oxidation state of lead is zero. Here, lead is plus four. And over on this side, lead two sulfate, it's going to be plus two. So that's unusual. The lead metal turns into lead two sulfate and the lead four oxide turns into lead two sulfate. All right. So the lead turns into lead to sulfate we've got to balance it well there's sulfate on this side so i had to have added sulfate on that side it can't just be so4 it has to be so4 2 minus so4 doesn't exist and now we have a charge imbalance this has a negative two charge and this has a neutral charge so i'm going to add two electrons to balance that out so i've balanced that first half equation there for the next one, well, I've got my lead box side. And that turns into more lead sulfate. So again, I'm going to want to add a sulfate to the reactant side. And I fix my sulfate problem. But what about this oxygen? Well, what you're, actually doing, what you're actually doing is balancing an acidic solution. If you remember, first fix the water, then fix the H pluses and then fix the electrons. How do I know it's acidic solution? It's a lead acid battery and I've got some oxygen here that needs to have some, needs to be taken care of. So I'm going to add water on this side and since there's two oxygens I need I'm going to have to add two waters. Now I've got a problem with the hydrogen ions. I've got four hydrogens on this side and none on that side and so I'm going to balance it out by adding four hydrogen ions to the reactants. Finally, the charges don't balance, and I'm only allowed to add negative charges, electrons. Overall, this has a charge of 2 plus, minus 2, plus, 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 it's 2 plus, and this is neutral. And I'm only allowed to add negative particles, the electron, so if I add 2 here, it all balances out now. A quick check, two electrons on one side, two electrons on the other side, Yet the electrons have to be on opposite sides or you've messed it up. And uh, I know that the lead acid battery involves the transfer of two electrons. 
So this is oxidation is loss of electrons. So this is oxidation. We've lost two electrons. So this must be reduction. The electrode in a voltaic cell that's giving off electrons, look, it's vomiting off these two electrons. That has to be the negative electrode. So this is the negative electrode. And the electrode that receives electrons is the positive electrode. And it seems with this new syllabus, you have to learn the names of that. So the negative electrode in a voltaic cell is known as the uh, anode. And this is the cathode. Here's an easy way to remember it. It's the opposite to what you think it should be. That's not very helpful advice, Thornley. And what could they ask you apart from this? Uh, this is the discharge cycle, where chemical energy is turning to electrical energy. Uh, the charge cycle, after all, this is a secondary cell. You, you can use it to uh, discharge and recharge. You can recharge this battery. So for the charging cycle, uh, all you have to do is flip the arrows around. And although the, the arrows reverse, I had to think about this a little bit now. Well, this can't be oxidation and reduction anymore. Oxidation's loss of electrons that we're going back. So these seem to have reversed. This is reduction. Oh, didn't break it. And this must be oxidation. But what's going on here? Well, I had to go back to first principles to, to recall what was going on. So with recharging this battery, taking electrical and turning it into chemical en energy, that's basically electrolysis. So you've got the car here, and via its alternator, it's charging up this rechargeable battery. So let's pretend this is the positive electrode, and that's the negative electrode. Electrons are coming down here, going up there. Electrons are being forced to gather at this negative electrode. They don't want to be at the negative electrode, but the car alternator acting like a, a battery is forcing the electrons where they don't want to go to here. And then I thought, well, what about the sodium chloride electrolysis? The sodium ion goes over to there. It picks up an electron and then makes sodium. So where electrons are being picked up, that's the negative electrode in electrolysis. And that's also called the cathode. So I, tried, I tried to transfer this idea onto this to work it out from first principles. So which electrode now is donating electrons? That's going to be the cathode, and that's the negative electrode. So yeah, there's the plus electrons. So it's still the negative electrode. But it's now called the cathode, because this is electrolysis, turning electrical into chemical energy. Which means the other one still must be the positive electrode, but it's now the anode. Now I struggle with this a little bit, this last bit. But going back to first principles, uh, you can work it out. Of course, the IB isn't really timing how good you are at chemistry, it's timing how good you are at fast chemistry. So God forbid you'd have the time to go back and actually work that out yourself.